The Supreme Court ruled today in a case involving the power of state legislatures. By a vote of six to three, the high court rejected a ruling that would have given legislatures more autonomy over federal elections and in drawing partisan congressional maps. It's one of a handful of significant cases the court is ruling on this week. For more, CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett joins us now. And Major, this is a pretty complicated ruling that deals with independent yep. state legislature theory. Right. So break down what that is and what this decision means. All right, let's imagine this. A state legislature says it's not bound by the ruling of the state's constitution, not the federal constitution, the state constitution, or the body in charge of enforcing that state's constitution, that state's Supreme Court. That is essentially what petitioners ask the Supreme Court to say. State legislatures are so powerful and their powers can be exercised in all manner of election controversies that no one in the state, not a governor, not a secretary of state, not a local election official, not the state Supreme Court, can have any role in determining whether they're acting or ruling in a way that's consistent with either that state constitution or the federal constitution. Cole, to describe that, as a radical interpretation of state legislative power is to be charitable. Don't trust me on that. That's what the Supreme Court said today, the conservative Supreme Court, by a six to three, and it was actually seven to two on the merits. The Supreme Court said this idea that state legislatures are so powerful doesn't exist, it's an invention, and we will not recognize it. That theory is now, for all purposes and time, dead. And because this decision came from the conservative court, you know, you have a lot of Democrats reacting, former President mm -hmm. Obama calling this a resounding rejection of the far right theory, uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer calling this ruling something that reaffirms the longstanding precedent that respects our constitutional system of checks and balances. I mean, do you think this came as a surprise to Democrats? So I think that they were wondering what the court would do with this case because they wondered why the court took it on in the first place and they were nervous Hey, wait a minute, this is settled law, and the precedent is long established. It goes all the way back to James Madison, who, because the Constitution is written in a certain way about the elections clause, gave the Congress the authority to oversee what state legislatures were doing in this space. Why? Because James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, others were suspicious of the political motives of state legislatures. So Democrats are like, this is settled law. Supreme Court, why are you doing this? Oh my gosh, are you doing this because you want to give this life? Actually, it didn't. It wanted to try to settle this matter so it doesn't come back, doesn't crop up in federal district courts or appellate courts or come back before the Supreme Court. And for the time being, this definitive ruling for the Supreme Court should guarantee, at least for the foreseeable future, this does not come back up in election controversies. And that's really important. Think about 2024. Let's just say this had been validated by the Supreme Court. A state legislature could say the secretary of state has no power, governor has no power, county election officials have no power. We are going to declare who won this state and who carries the state's electoral votes. Can you imagine the chaos, uncertainty, and anxiety, to put it mildly, that would create? That's not going to happen. And of course, this isn't the only big decision the court is ruling on this week. What else can we expect? Three in, in Maine are regarded as important. There's a First Amendment case that also uh, is involved in gay rights and the assertion thereof. There's also two very, very big cases, one on the future of affirmative action and college admissions, the other on the permissibility, legally speaking, of President Biden's student loan debt forgiveness program. On student loans, the administration has said this was carried out under a 2003 law that gives the education secretary wide authority to change repayment terms. And that's what Congress intended, and we're acting completely within the construct of that. The court heard very forceful arguments that no Congress ever gave this administration that kind of power, but affirmative action, student loans, those will be the big cases by the end of this week. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking to you more. Major Garrett, thank you so much for your expertise.